That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Crime is Mine, the 23rd film directed by Francois Ozon, which is being released courtesy of Music Box Films in the U.S. on December 25th, 2023. Notably, one of the last territories to see the release of this film, which premiered earlier this year at a very small French film festival. Do I know a Francois Ozon film? Uh, yeah, uh, you know a couple. We reviewed his previous film to this, Peter von Kant, which is, of course, a remake of... Uh, Fassbender's classic, The Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant. Uh, you've also seen Eight Women and Criminal Lovers. Okay. Mm -hmm. This film, Madeleine Verdier, a young actress, is accused of murdering a famous producer. After being acquitted, she begins her new life of fame and success until the truth comes out. That's basically the movie. Yes. What's your pull quote? Silly and not nearly as smart as its expert cast would suggest, Ozone's slapstick-adjacent remake of this old-fashioned stage play owes everything to the talents of two plucky ingenues and a brassy Isabelle Huppert. Mine. More silly than witty, The Crime is Mine functions as being humorous, light viewing, if not completely forgettable. Yeah, so it's based on a 1934 play, which I believe the original's French. This has already been remade. This has already been made twice in the U.S. First in 1937, which is I think is a better version, starring Carol Lombard, directed by Wesley Ruggles, known as True Confession. And then it was remade in '46 with uh, directed by John Barry as Cross My Heart, starring I believe Betty Hutton. And I have not seen that version. I didn't know there were other films based on this story, so. Knowing that now, I, I, I really am disappointed that this film didn't feel more edgy, um, considering, you know, I'm assuming back then a lot of things had to be, like, because, like, there involves, like, assault against women in this film mm -hmm. or story, so I'm assuming back then a, a, a lot of it was handled a different well, way. Well, sexual assault, murder, yeah. <laughs> in this film, it, it is a little more explicit, but it feels more... this. The vibe of this movie, to me, could be like a sitcom. <laughs> yes, and I think we can chalk that up to Fran Ozon. You know, he does at least a movie a year, and I, I think perhaps overextends himself because it, it feels a little rushed and rough around the edges. I agree. So, trying to tell the basic story. So, Madeline is this beautiful, young, aspiring actress, and we see that she has gone to this, like, successful producer's house for an audition. So when she returns home to her apartment, she has a roommate who's named Pauline. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nadia Tereskiewicz plays uh, Madeline, and Pauline is played by Rebecca Martyr. So Pauline knows her roommate friend uh, went to an audition, but when Madeline comes home, she seems sort of down. So Pauline's like, oh no, how did the audition go? Well, I got the part. That's great. Yeah, it's 10,000 francs a month. Oh my God, that's even better. Because before Madeline gets home, the landlord shows up saying, I'm going to evict you. You're like four months behind on your rent. I think five, but yeah. Yeah. But Pauline, you know, does her magic to sort of get a little extra time. It's important to know Pauline is a lawyer. Not a very successful one, but she's a lawyer. So, of course... Pauline's like, well, why the long face? Well, I didn't take the job because this jerk assaulted me. And suggested if I wanted the part, I think he said she also had to meet him once a month clandestinely. Yeah, she had to spend an hour with him like once a week or something, something like to that. have sex with him. So she didn't want to do that. Then all of a sudden, police knock on the door. And they're like, we need to question you because we understand you were at this producer's house. Well, a couple hours... After or an hour after you left, he was found dead. So of course we think it's you. Shot in the head. And they see a gun at her apartment, so they confiscate that. They take her down. Pauline goes with her, and Madeline's like, "Well, this is my lawyer." And the person in charge, who they're calling a judge. Mm -hmm. What's that actor's name? Oh, that's Fabrice Lucchini, who's worked with Ozan before and Dupere. I like him. Very, very notable. Yep. He's like, "Well, we're gonna throw the book at you because you killed this man to rob him." Uh, because that day they also find out that that producer had 300,000 francs brought to him in cash and now the money's gone. So she's like, well, okay, well, I didn't do it, but her friend, Madeline or Pauline, the lawyer says, well, okay, but what if we flip the scenario? What if she killed him because he was assaulting her 
Then the judge goes, oh, well, then she wouldn't get any jail time because she was defending herself. So Madeline's like, well, that's it. That's what I did. So she admits to this crime. Because <laughs> also part of, you know, the silliness of the story is that no one knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. The judge, yeah. the cops, these There's two the ladies. Lawyer, yeah. No one knows what they're doing. So instead of her thinking, like, there really is no evidence to prove I did this, she just immediately goes, well... If I can get off for self-defense, I'm just going to admit to it. So then we get a section of the movie that's the trial. She's acquitted. And then she becomes sort of a symbol for women. like Kind of like the ladies in Chicago. Yes. So now Madeline is getting all these gigs. So she's a successful actor. And Pauline is getting jobs as a lawyer because she got Madeline off. So now they're doing really well. They live in a mansion. They have a housekeeper. One day... Someone knocks on the door, and who would it be? Isabelle Huppert. Playing Odette Chomet. Who we find out was a prolific silent film actress. Apparently is based on Sarah Bernhardt. And she says, you know, y'all have done really well for yourselves based off of this crime. But the crime is mine. I killed that man. And I knew she had killed him because at the beginning of the film, as Madeline is leaving the producer's house, she bumps into Isabelle Luper walking towards the house. So she's like, yeah, I went over there because he was an old friend of mine. I'm the reason he's even where he is today because I was his like uh, muse or whatever. And I went over there to ask him for some money and he got mad and pulled a gun on me. But I sort of seduced him, took the gun and shot his ass. And I took his wallet. So she has proof <laughs> that she was there, that she robbed him, except she can't find the 300,000 francs. So she tells these two girls, if you don't give me my money, the 300,000 francs, I'm going to go to the police and say I did it. And they're like, well, that's stupid because A, we're not going to get in trouble because we didn't do anything really. B, like you're, it's not guaranteed that we're going to lose all our stuff. And then you might get in trouble. So Madeline tells Isabel, kick rocks. Isabel goes to the judge and he's like, girl. This is the best scene of the film. I think the best yeah. thing in the film is when Isabel goes to the judge because he says, uh, we're not reopening this case. The public is happy that we found who did it. The person who did it has paid her, you know, like everyone loves her. No, if you want to admit to a crime, go flip through these unsolved crimes. <laughs> so they literally start going through files he has opened on his desk. He's like, would you like to admit to doing this? So of course she's mad. Like, no, I want to admit to the crime I committed. And he's like, absolutely not. Get out of here. So she decides to go to the press, but before she can get to the press, Madeline and Pauline intercept, intercept her and say, listen, what if we offer you a role like in a play? The it, current stage play that uh, Madeline's starring in. It could jumpstart your career. She's like, yeah, I'll do it, but I also want my money. So how are they going to get the money? Another side plot is that before all this happened, Madeline was dating the son of a very rich man. A tire baron. Uh, played by Andre Dussolier. And we can get more into that story in a second, but basically, Madeline sets it up where she. another side story is that she meets um, a guy who is very grateful to her because the producer who was killed, this man who's played by... That's Danny Boone, who's kind of usually like a Jerry Lewis, Adam Sandler type of comedian. He owed that producer $8 million, but because he's been killed, he doesn't owe him the money anymore. So he goes to Madeline like, thanks to you, I don't owe $7.5 million, so if you ever need anything from me, let me know. So she pulls that favor, and she says, why don't you go to my boyfriend's dad's office and tell him you're willing to invest $1.5 million? Because we find out that the tire baron is having financial problems. Which is why he wants his son to marry a rich woman. Yeah. So the Danny Boone guy says, yeah, I'll do it because I owe you. But he tells the tire baron, I'll do this if you allow Madeline to marry your son. Well, why would I do that? Well, because they, they have this long drawn out thing, but the gag is they're doing this so that they can bring in Isabelle Huppert's character and say, well, if we don't give her 300000 she's going to blow the lid off of everything, which could really affect... There's a, a ripple effect there, that ruin them all. There will be a ripple effect that will ruin everyone. So the tire baron writes Isabelle a check for 300,000 francs. She's happy. And the final scene of the film is Isabelle and Madeline 
are both in this play together and everyone's happy the end. Yeah. There's so much going on in this story. Well, it, it, it is kind of that 30s slapstick sense of ridiculousness, but... The it, problem for me is it's not slapsticky enough. It's not silly enough. And then it's certainly, like, I, I think the humor, I did, I was amused for almost all of the film. Lightly amused. It, Lightly amused. I likened it to, you know, when you make pancakes, you're not supposed to overmix the batter because then the final product is heavy and doughy and leaden. That that this feels just very over like hurried and it feels it weighed mixed. it feels it's weighed down mm -hmm. for sure. And it like it's unfortunate because I thought all of the actors did a fine job. Yeah, I thought both the leads who were kind of just uh very much right before they were cast in this had breakout roles in other French films. Uh, I, I think they're both very likable. I think Mar Rebecca Martyr, she kind of has like a Fanny Ardant jawline. I think she's significant on screen. So I, I really like, they're both good. Yeah, I like both of the young ladies. And of course, Isabelle's the best part. She's the best part. Although, you know, this is uh, her reunion with Ozon after eight, Wheat Falm, eight women. And she's playing a character, he's using her in a similar way as this, uh, Difficult, 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 loquacious harridan that everybody hates. I would imagine she was only, he only had her maybe for like three days. Mm -hmm. And I bet there was no rehearsal. It was just her memorizing her lines and showing up. I mean, she looks, she's outfitted in a way that reminded me of, she could play Nancy in a new version of uh, Oliver Twist. She's wearing the same outfit. She has like four different outfits that are all the same except like different colors. And I, yeah, her... I liked her a lot and her line delivery, yeah, yeah. but it all feels very rushed. Like if we would have had more time, we could have finessed a lot of it. Yes, I agree. Um, again, it feels like a sitcom. There is a moment that I thought was the perfect example of that when the judge brings in another suspect, the Danny Boone guy. Mm -hmm. And they happen to be very good friends. But when Danny Boone shows up, he's like, no, today I'm wearing my prosecutor hat so we can't have a hug and we can't talk about personal stuff. <laughs> and then, Even though his alibi is the fact that he was having tea with the judge. Right, right. And, the ju and the judge is like, well, where were you Saturday night or whatever? And Danny Boone says, well, I was with you. And he's like, oh. Well, there, were there any witnesses? Were there any witnesses? Well, you. He's like, well, it can't be me. I can't testify for you. So it's like, well, I guess it'd be your wife or my wife. Your dog. It was, I found it silly, but then it's just like, yeah, this feels like I mean, any episode of I Love Lucy to me is funnier and wittier than this was. It just feels a bit off the mark. Yeah. But, like the, the punchlines aren't really landing where they should and I think could have been a lot smarter. Well, and another example of what could have been so much better is the courtroom scene because of course Madeline's got herself into a pickle and because she's lying about killing someone, she believes, well, Pauline believes the best approach since Madeline is an actress is Pauline writes a script for Madeline to recite in court. So initially, Madeline's doing a good job reciting these lines Pauline has written for her about what happened. But then towards the end of her giving testimony, she mixes up her story with a different movie. <laughs> yeah. And then while she's talking, the film is reenacting, like like mm -hmm. a dramatization of how she killed this and man. Like, like what, candlesticks? We didn't find any candlesticks. Yeah, and all of a sudden she's like, and then I grabbed two candlesticks and put, and then she's like, oh wait, that's a different movie. And of course everyone's like, she's a liar. <laughs> yeah, there are, there are fun moments. I do like, you know, Azone is very much in love with cinema and I like his little references. Like early on in the film, they go see, uh, Billy Wilder's early film, Bad Seed, starring Danielle Deru, who was, of course, in Eight Women as well, uh, which I think is a nice touch. Uh, Madeline also, after her trial, stars in a film called The Bitter Tears of Marie Antoinette. Oh, and then once again, I, I did think my favorite line was when the judge tells Isabel, uh, accuse yourself of one of these crimes, and then has her like look at Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, and then also they keep referencing a character, a real life person named Violette Nozier, and Isabel famously played her oh. in 1978 in the Claude Chabrol film, which she won Best Actress for at Cannes that year. Um, so no one really know like the Isabel's supposed to be this like noted silent film actress, but a lot of people don't recognize her except older people. And then when Isabel agrees to go have lunch with. Pauline and Madeline, the server 
recognizes her and he's like, I'm your biggest fan. I've seen all of your films. The Magic Flute. And her big film was called The Magic Flute, which I thought was funny. Also, Isabel, as this character is described as silent cinema's most expressive eyes. <laughs> For some reason, I think that's really funny. I think that's funny. She's got like this parakeet shade of eyeshadow on that is amusing She to looks me. a little garish, but fun. <laughs> I think that's on purpose. It's yeah. also important to know that in the in the play that they're putting on at the end, it's mimicking the death of this producer. Mm -hmm. And in that play, we see that both of the women killed the producer. So I was surprised to learn that this was shot by Manu Dacos, who's one of my favorite current cinematographers and who's especially excellent in genre films. Uh, I liked how this film looked. The most, film looks fine. Mostly, but I did feel like it does feel, especially the opening when she's leaving the producer's house, it felt very like we were in modern time with just her wearing old timey clothes. Mm -hmm. It felt, it's like just a little too glossy. It is, but the production is better than you, like, you know, we, we do get some exterior shots of them walking that clearly required some uh, staging. And I think the house, the like the interiors work well. The house Madeline and Pauline live in, both the raggedy apartment and the mansion both look nice. Yeah, I, I mean, I would live in that apartment in, yeah. in Paris. Come on now. Uh, if you're watching this just for Isabel, uh, she doesn't show up really until past the hour mark. Yeah. Which, but once she does show up, she has some impact. Yes, yeah, she does. What would you give this film? I think I, maybe I had high expectations, and I guess I haven't really loved. You know, I like when he does trashy stuff, kind of, like uh, Double Lover or The New Girlfriend, because I think he still works the best in that. Because when he first came out, he was that, uh, they called him fr French cinema's ter uh, enfant, enfant terrible. Uh, and I like his early stuff with Marina Devan, and especially Under the Sand and Swimming Pool. But I think maybe I had high expectations with the reunion with Isabel. And I, I think I just wish he'd take his time more, but I would give it two and a half. I thought this movie was fine. I would give it two and a half out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.